Liverpool legend Jamie Carragher joins us right now. And I guess the, the magic question, and it's hard to find an answer to this moving target, but what is your sense on when and how EPL is going to finally return to activity? Well, I think it's going to be difficult. It really is. Uh, there's lots of leagues at this moment, uh, you know, stopping the season. I think it's the real four big giants really still left in, in the Premier League, the German Bundesliga, Serie A and La Liga, really, because I just think there's so much more money involved in those leagues. And that's why they're probably taking their time uh, to make the decision and probably leaving it as long as they possibly can, really. And I think all of those leagues desperately want to get the league finished. But the virus will decide where the leagues are finished. No one will make a decision at the top of any football uh, authority. It'll be the virus will decide. And if it's and if the curve is not going the uh, the right way, the way we all want it to go, then I, I don't think football can continue. But if it's going in the right way, the players can play uh, safely and everything's you know above board, if you like. I think uh, a lot of football fans would like to see it play. But it's as I said, the, the virus will decide. Uh, Jamie, the hot topic has been Liverpool, the title, the season, cancelling, resuming. Uh, what do you think should happen? Do you think Liverpool should be crowned champions? Would you like to see the season return in some fashion? And based on what you've heard, how would you think that would be best to come back? Well, I've said from day one, I would like to see the finish just for the integrity of, of, the, uh, of the game, really. And I don't think we should almost be looking to next season that hasn't started. More, that's more important that that's right than a season that's 75% uh, done, really. So I've always felt whenever we can start to play football again, finish this season. Now, I know that's difficult, really, with your way for the next season and the Champions League and, and things like that. So maybe it, it can't go on forever. There has to be a point where you say, well, OK, we can't go past this point. I think your way have said that was August the second, I believe. So maybe that is uh, the criteria. And I understand that at some stage. So yes, I'd like to see it finish. Yes, from Liverpool's point of view. Uh, but Champions League places, relegation, people come up from the Champions, lots of other divisions also, uh, really. But whether uh, it can be done, that is, that is the big question. The big thing is players also. You know, how how much the players actually want to play, how much influences that with their families as well. You've got wives and children at home as well. So, there's there's a there's a lot to go with it, but I think people keep thinking that the league will be void. I, I think people actually need to remember what UEFA came out and said two weeks ago, which no league will be void because that league then would not have uh, participants in European competition next season. That was the almost the rule from UEFA. So no no league has been void. I think Paris Saint Germain have been given the title in France. Uh, the teams in the Dutch league weren't because they were so tight together. I think there was one point between them, which is understandable. How can you decide a title winner? So I don't sit here worrying uh, from Liverpool's point of view that they won't be champions in some way. I just prefer if they could play the, the remaining nine games like everyone else. And then you can say, OK, it's all done. But I don't think anyone in the right sort of, uh, frame of mind could argue that Liverpool weren't deserving champions if they were given you know, the title at this stage. Jamie, I'm sure there are some people that will argue with that. <laughs> That's part of what goes on right now. But when you talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, long term. And uh, one of the things that's happened uh, over the last couple of months is maybe some added uh, and needed perspective when it comes to not just not just soccer, not just football, but but all sports. Let's let's uh, let's be positive. And if and when the game does come back, do you think the EPL? We know it's the most popular league in the world. Do you think that it just doubles down in terms of its popularity, or do you think that people are slow to come back to uh, either football or just sports in general? No, that that is a difficult one because I think a few weeks ago we all had this feeling that if we get football back, it'll give the country a lift. I think uh, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson said that uh, about a week ago, uh, really, but. I'm not necessarily sure that is the exact feeling uh, that everyone is desperate to get football back, uh, really. I think as time's gone on, this has become a lot more serious than we all probably feared or thought, certainly at the uh, start of the pandemic, really. And at this moment, the numbers are coming down in our country. Hopefully, that, you know, that'll continue. And that makes it easier for the world to get going again, never mind just, just football. But at this moment... I, I think the the country's probably split on whether they want football back to give everyone a lift or whether they think it's actually right, uh, really. So there's so much up to debate in, in England at the moment. Anything that comes up or maybe looks like a certain solution for the football coming back, it's already shot down by something else. It's just It must be really difficult for the Premier League at the moment.
Uh, Jamie, th this virus has given, I think, everybody a, a unique opportunity to have some perspective and to, and to look at things in a different way. How do you think the COVID-19 pandemic will change English football for the better or for worse? You know, curtailed spending, reduced salaries. I mean, how do you, how do you see this playing out when football does resume? Well, I think it's going to hurt football for the next few years, as I think it'll hurt the the economy around the world. Uh, we know what happened in, in I think it's about well, two thousand and eight with you know the recession around the world. I think this could be worse. Uh, really. I think it's really going to affect football in terms of transfer fees as well. If you were a player thinking you were going to move this summer or maybe even next summer, uh, I think it's going to be a lot more difficult really to uh, to move on from a club or for a certain club to get the money that they feel they deserve for a certain place. So financially, I think it's really going to hit. I think players who are already just signed long contracts, I think that they're in a really fortunate position. But I think players who are looking to move or maybe on Bosman transfers or maybe got a year to go, I think the wages they thought they'd be getting in the next two or three years will not be there. And sometimes there's always some sort of negotiation with teams and players. But players deep down know the clubs have got the money. You know what the TV deal is now. But I think now players know the clubs may not have the money that they once had. And I think it will be really difficult to push players uh, or push teams, agents, fees that we hear about. You think of Raiola with Pogba and things like that. I mean, that's never seen as a, a really good thing for that type of money to be coming out of the game. But I think it'll look awful uh, in the next two or three years if these type of figures are getting mentioned around. So I'm not going to sit here and say players shouldn't get X, Y, Z. I think that would be hypocritical. We've, we've been players. We all want to earn what we can and maximise that. And the players today are exactly the same. And good luck to them. Uh, but I don't think the uh, the clubs will have the revenue streams that they've had in the past, and I think that will alter clubs uh, and players' wages. Jamie, in times of crisis, uh, there is opportunity. We have seen that everything is kind of possibly going to get thrown on the wall and see what sticks when it comes out. There is anything out there that you've heard? We've heard about different formats when it comes to actually playing games. We've heard about you know teams coming together in one place. We've heard about all sorts uh, multiple substitutions, all that kind of stuff. Is there anything out there that you've heard that you say, you know what, that might even stick beyond the crisis? Well, in, in I've actually been looking at it from a TV point of view, uh, really, already, and thinking what, what we're doing now on uh, Skype, Zoom. That We do it with Sky uh, every morning also. And it's actually getting interviews with players, interaction with players. So because I'm, I'm now in the TV, I've got my TV hat on rather than my football hat. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> players to, yeah, how we can get players to join us on Monday Night Football. So I've already had these discussions with Sky and, when we're analysing someone's play, it was always have to be positive. I'm not sure we get someone to come on if we were actually uh, criticising them too much and explain what they were trying to do. But if someone scored a great goal from the weekend and we could get uh, Oxlade Chamber on talking about a free kick or a cross and you could have him on you know, a big screen Zoom talking us through it, we're analysing it, maybe get a manager to explain a set-piece goal or a routine or a set-up and a formation. So I'm actually looking at ways uh, with the TV uh, going for how we can hence our enhance our coverage really rather than the actual football and that's that's the problem when you're out of football too long thanks to jamie Carragher for joining us and plenty more liverpool feel coming your way this sunday on fs1 liverpool manager jurgen klopp joins us on indoor soccer the e mls tournament special continues and then a double shot of mls cup activity marco echeverry el diablo dc united taking on la galaxy in the first ever mls cup plus the Atlanta Portland MLS Cup 2018 edition coming your way this Sunday on FS1. For the best soccer content anywhere on the internet, follow Fox Soccer on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.